everyone. So these days we are all cooped up at home and we're getting all these ideas about activities to do with children. And I know a lot of you have been learning uh, many Montessori uh, activities and techniques and you want to try and put a Montessori shelf together. And the first thing a lot of people tell me is I just I don't have the space uh, they, they have this idea in their mind that they're going to need so many shelves and they're going to need a whole room to prepare their Montessori area but that can't always be possible especially in a time like this when we can't even go out and buy a shelf we're making do with what we have at home so uh, I have grown-up children my children are almost 18 uh, but I have a young niece and nephew they're five and four years old and they live in the same building as me just below and they keep getting assignments from home of different uh, activities that they need to do so I wanted to uh, be able to give my niece and nephew the experience of working with some of the materials and uh, trying to make it into a real Montessori experience rather than just very impromptu uh, whenever I get a chance so I set up a few materials that I have uh, at home now having grown up children means I really don't have space uh, to set up shelves you know after all these years and uh, I live in a small apartment so I thought you know where could I put things on the shelf to give them choices because I wanted them to be able to see the material and choose for them for uh, for themselves and keep it as real to Montessori as I possibly could so I had a bookshelf which you can see beside, behind me and it was full of my uh, son's study books and reading books and things like that. So I put two shelves, I emptied two of the bottom shelves and I put those books away in an old carton and I put it into storage in my basement. And then I set up the materials as best I could. And I'm going to give you a close up of it in a little while but I'll just take you uh, through it just as a little bit of a rush okay just from afar so uh, I have what they're studying right now in school they're doing a lot of culture they're doing parts of animals they're doing life cycles so I went uh, and I got some of the puzzles for them I have the life cycle I have the parts of the bird here and uh, my niece is uh, three going on four and my nephew's five going on six so they're both doing very different things in language. In culture, it overlaps, but in language, they're doing very different things. So I, you know, got the small movable alphabet because I want to teach phonograms, uh, work with phonograms with my nephew. And I'm going to use the same small movable alphabet with the pink boxes for my niece. Now, ideally, it would be nice to have them all separated, but I just cannot accommodate that kind of space and so I've piled it on top and I've got some word lists over here at the bottom so I've got my my culture and my language up here for now and down here I've got some math my nephew is doing the thousands and units uh, so I've got the golden bead material here whereas my niece is doing linear counting she's counting from 1 to 20 so over here I've got my uh, short bead stair with my uh, teen board and uh, 10 beads and at the back here I have some terminology cards as extensions for them right here I've kept some mats also available now I wanted to you know like I said make this as natural as a process and so over here I have set up I had a little side table which I brought and I've put some reading books for them in the back here I've got different colored paper and some white paper and we have journals that we do every day there and at the bottom I've got different kinds of writing tools I've got some crayons I've got color pencils I've got markers and gel pens so there's options for them uh, I have ordered some little scissors which should arrive soon so I will add that with some glue so they have a variety of uh, activities that they can work with the most important thing is that they should have options you know things to choose it shouldn't feel like oh this is all I have I have to do what you know she wants me to do they should feel free to pick up and work with what they feel like working uh, like I said I'll take you close in uh, in a moment but I just wanted you to see that in a small space you can still make it work it isn't the absolute best 
but with circumstances the way they are with the space I have in my house this is the very best that I can do right now so be a little bit easy on yourself as well uh, don't feel that you have to make it absolutely perfect work with the kind of space you have in your house make sure that it's a space where uh, they would have you know a place to work on the floor place to be on a table and write even though you don't have a chance to buy actual small tables or something but something that close by where they can have a table area to do any writing work uh, make it pretty make it organized you know things not just looking messy and ugly keep the simple things in mind and share your pictures with me I'd love to see how you put together a little prepared environment in your homes for your little ones uh, post them here we can have a look we can all share we'll get ideas and maybe I'll learn something from you as well so good luck with that if you have any questions please post them in the comments below okay so here are my two tiny little shelves and we have the culture material there okay because this is what they're learning right now we have some language material and then we come here to the math to learn the tens and units uh, with the number cards okay and we have the here we have the short bead stair with the tens so I can teach her 11 to 19 and we have some uh, terminology cards there and then here I have my Sagan board over here and I've got two little mats there for them to use and this is like I said a little art area with paper I've kept them some of their favorite storybooks that they can flip through or we can read for them and uh, those are the coloring tools I think the color pencil somebody's using so keep watching because I'm going to share with you videos of us using this material the presentations and you can see how it goes and we're going to do some uh, extensions and variations for these as well so I hope it's going to be fun share your videos too I can't wait to see what you've been doing